Hi, for your 10.8 lesson, we have our special segments. We're going to talk about different things that happen with our segments within our circle and outside of our circle. Talk about you know chords, secants, tangents, etc. Uh, we'll get through this as quickly as possible. As always, please make sure that you pause or you, uh, rewind, whatever you need to, to make sure that you get this, because I do want to make this as short as possible. The first theorem we're going to talk about is segments of chords theorem. So we're talking about chords and their segments. If we have two chords that intersect on the interior of the circle, which two chords have to intersect on the inside, because chords stay inside, what's going to happen is the product of, one, of the lengths of one chord is going to be equal to the product of the lengths of the other chord. What that means here is this is that formula you're going to want to know. Part times part is equal to part times part. So in this first example, all we're looking at here, we see here that we have, um, we have this chord has been bisected. So we know that the whole thing is 12. So we have 6 over here and we have 6 over here. So all this means is we're going to take one chord's part times its other part. So this part of 6 times the other part, which is the other six. This will be equal to, let's take a look at our other chord, which happens to also be a diameter. The part up here is three, and we're gonna multiply that by this part of x, okay? So then we're gonna wind up with 36 equals three x. Now they are wanting the radius of this, okay? So this is what we'll do. Um, go ahead and solve through, dividing by three, we're going to find out that x is going to come out to 12. So then we need to realize that the diameter is going to be this x plus 3. So we find our diameter, then we can find our radius. So that's going to wind up being 12 plus 3. So the diameter is equal to 15. Half of that being our radius is going to be 7.5. Okay. We're going to do the same thing on example 2, except now we're going to bring in a little bit of algebra a little more algebra. We are going to find a, both AC and both DB. So we are going to be substituting in and figuring out what's going on here. So the first thing we need to remember is we want our part times parts. So we'll take this chord right here and we'll do the part of the X times 2. Or sorry, X plus 2. Now we notice we're going to be multiplying by the other part 3. So we're going to have to do distribution. Remember the whole number always goes on the outside. We will set that equal to the other part, or the other, uh, sorry, the other chord, it's part times part. So chord CA, we're going to do 6 times X, which will just come out to 6X. Now we go through, we do our distribution over here. We're going to get 3X, distribute to the 2 as well, plus 6, all equal to 6X. We solve all the way through. We're going to wind up with 3x equals 6, and then x in the end will equal 2. So again, we need to find both of these. Um, we want to find AC, the whole thing, and we want to find uh, B, DB, the whole thing. So let's look at, since it says AC first, for AC, we need to realize that AC is going to be this x plus the 6. So all we do is substitute in 2 for x, because that's what we found out, and ac is going to equal 8. Now to find db, we need to realize that db, sorry, write it differently, is going to be the x plus 2 plus 3. So we have x plus 2 plus that 3. Well, we can substitute in for x here, which was 2 plus, and we know that 2 plus 3 is 5. All we're doing is adding those together, and db is going to come out to 7. All right. So go ahead and take a look at, so fill in the blanks. We have a tangent segment. So remember, a tangent is just going to go and brush up against the, um, the circle, just going to touch the circle. Tangent touches the circle at a single point. But what we're looking for is we're looking for an actual segment. And you guys have seen this. Um, this tangent segment is going to be a segment that is tangent to the circle at an end point. And we'll take a look at these. The next thing is your, seg uh, is your secant segment. 
So remember, your secant, secant is going to slice through. It's going to enter the circle at one point and exit at another point. Um, it's going to contain a cord on the inside. So it's going to contain a cord of the circle and has exactly one end point outside the circle. Then we're going to discuss the part of a secant segment that is outside, it's going to appear the secant segment, the part that is outside the circle is called the exterior secant, or sorry, segment, because it's outside. So let's take a look at what we have here in the picture to explain exactly what all three of these meant. Okay, first we're going to name a tangent segment. So let's find our tangent. We see here that our tangent is ray S C. The problem is we want it as a segment, so it has to stop at C. You've seen this, okay? So we have segment SC. We're going to chop it off at that arrow. We just want an end point outside and then where it touches that uh, point of tangency. Next, if we take a look at our secant segment, our secant segment, uh, we want to make sure that we slice through, okay? So it's going to have an end point. It's going to have one endpoint outside, or secant segment, one endpoint outside, and it's going to go into that circle. So here we're looking at this whole thing. So the segment would actually be segment SA. So it's not going to exit the other side. It's going to go in and then stop. Okay, so this is going to be segment SA. Then your exterior segment is just going to be that part. Remember, the exterior segment is that part of the secant segment that is outside, exterior. So that's just going to be right here at segment SN. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. So that's going to help us understand what's going on with this next, the next theorems. All right. So the next theorem, the segments of secants theorems. We're looking at these secants now. And we see right here we have exactly what we had with segment SA. It's going to have an exterior point. It's going to go in. It's going to stop. Okay, it's going to stop at an end point. Uh, sorry, I should probably highlight and read the uh, theorem. This theorem is saying if we have two segments that share an end point outside the circle and two secant segments, okay, this is not the same as tangent segments. We've got an inside part and an outside part. We need to focus on this. This is what the theorem is telling you, okay? It, the theorems can sound really, really complicated. All we're doing here is we're multiplying the whole part of one secant segment times just the exterior or the external, and it's going to be equal to the other secant segment to the exterior segment. So what? That still sounds gibberish. Okay, let's look at this. We're going to find OL in the end. So let's take a look. We know we need our whole, which on, let's take a look at the first secant segment up here. This whole part right here is going to be X plus 6. So we're going to take our whole of X plus 6, and we're going to multiply it by the external, so the outside part. Okay, so this is your outside section. And that's going to be the 6. Now, again, we have a whole number there with some algebra we're going to have to distribute. This is going to be equal to the other side's whole, which is going to be 18 plus 9. This will give us 27. So the whole of 27 times just the external part over here of 9. Okay, so we'll go through, distribute, we get 6x, and then 6 times a positive 6 plus 36, all equal to 27 times 9 is going to give you 243. Pause it, solve it, come back. All right, you guys do these on your own. Subtract that 36. 6x is going to give us 207. 207 is not divisible evenly by 6, but it will come out to about 34.5. Okay? So now we need to plug in for OL. Let's find out where OL is. OL is the entire secant segment. Okay? So OL is going to be equal to that x plus 6. Plug in that 34.5 for x plus 6. OL will end up coming out to 40.5. So these are just some formulas that you need to you need to look at and see, okay, to help you guys out. Because the formulas will tell you exactly what to do. 
And you'll see that again here in just a moment. We're going to change that formula up just a little bit because we're going to talk about not just secants, secant segments, but now we're talking about segments of secants and tangents. So if you look at the picture, it's different. Now we have that secant segment still, but now we have that tangent segment. It does not go inside. So when you're dealing with this one, this is if you have a secant segment and a tangent segment, and they share an endpoint outside. Okay. Again, I'm not going to worry about reading all of this. All it's going to mean is that your tangent segment squared is going to be equal to that whole times the exterior of the secant. Okay. So if we take a look at here, we are going to be looking for uh, WR in the end, which will be right here. It's so just X. All right. So we want to look at our tangent. Our tangent just touches. So we're going to take our tangent squared. So we take 12 squared. This will be equal to the whole, which they already gave us. Awesome. 16 times the, ex or the external secant right here of just x. Okay. 12 squared is 144. So that will equal 16x. We divide both sides by that 16. x is going to come out to 9. And since WR is equal to X, WR is just 9. Sorry for the sloppy handwriting. So now in the next example, what I want you guys to see is, okay, you need to go, okay, which one of these do we have? Do I have two cords? I've got to find the right papers here. Do I have my two cords intersecting? So do I do part times part equals part times part? Do I have two secant segments, so I need to do whole times external, whole times external, or do I have a tangent segment and a secant segment? Well, I'm seeing, as you're seeing my notes already, the key to it, I'm seeing here that I have two chords. So we're only going to find um, x on this one, so we're not going to have to substitute back in. And this here, when we had our two chords, if we look back at that right here, the two chords, we had part times part equals part times part. So here, we'll go ahead and write that down to remind ourselves. Part times part equals the other part times part. So with my two chords here, I've got one chord right here. And actually, I, was try I try to leave out some of these where you're multiplying and getting x squared, but you guys know how to undo x squared, so we're, we're just going to go ahead and go with this. So we're going to have 2x times 3x. This will be equal to our other chord, part times part, and that will be equal to 18 times 3. So we go through and we do that multiplication. What's going to end up happening is here... 2x times 3x, well, 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is x squared. This is all equal to 18 times 3, which is 54. The last thing that we're going to undo is that square rooting. So we need to divide both sides by that 6 first. And we're going to get that x squared is equal to 9. Now, we all know from Pythagorean theorem, undo that square, we square root. X is going to come out to 3, and we are done. Okay, that's the most complicated you can have there is with that X squared. Example 7, we're going to find MC. Example 7, I see a tangent, and I see a secant segment, or tangent segment and a secant segment. So that's going to be this guy right here. Your tangent squared is equal to whole times exter uh, external. We're going to find MC, so we'll substitute back in in a moment. So this is going to be like example number five. We're going to have our tangent squared equal to whole times external. So we start off first. Let's, okay, let's take our tangent right here, our tangent segment. We're going to have 10 squared, tangent uh, squared, equal to the other side over here. We want the whole, which is going to be 5 plus x. Now what I want you to notice is we are going to have the, exter the external over here, a whole number, so we're going to have that distribution again. Okay. 
And if you want to put x plus 5, that's fine as well. So uh, 10 squared is going to give you 100 equal to, we distribute, we're going to get 25 plus 5 times x is just 5x. And go ahead and go through the process of solving for x. So we get 75 is equal to 5x, divide, and we find out that x is going to be 15. Now again, we wanted mc, so we need to go back and look at where is mc. mc is this whole thing right here. So let's go do some plugging in. Substitution. mc is 5 plus x, so we have 5 plus x was 15. So mc comes out to 20. All right, we're almost done. I think we only have one more to do. Well, getting there, guys. Last problem. Let's take a look at what we have. I see two secant segments. They sli they're going to slice into that circle. They both go into. So we look back at our notes and say, okay, that's not it. All right. Hmm. Oh, it looks like this guy. So we have whole times ex external is equal to whole times external. So that's how we run through this. Let's look at what do we have? What do I see? Okay. So since we are going to find SL in the end, which is going to be this whole thing. But first, let's take a look. This is going to, we're going to go ahead and write our formula, our whole times external. I'm just going to kind of extern substituted whole times external. Okay? And a good way to remember this is these are the exact same things. They're both secant segments. So you have the same thing on both sides. When we had our tangent and secants, they're different. So you can have something different on both sides. And then when we had our two chords, again, they're both the same thing, the two chords. So you end up with the same thing on both sides in that formula. Okay? So let's go ahead and start looking at this. Well, I need the whole right here. My whole here is going to be 9, 5 plus 4. So we have 9 times the exterior, the external point right here, 4, equal to, over here again, the whole is going to be x plus 4 plus the 3. So we have to combine those like terms with x plus 7. And I see that I'm going to have some uh, distributing to do, times the 3, the external. So 9 times 4 will give me 36. Distribute here, we get 3x. We got x plus 7, so 3 times 7 gives us plus 21. Go through your math, your algebra solving for that variable. We're going to find out that 3x is equal to 15, giving us x is 5. Now we did want to find SL, so take a look at SL. Remember, SL, we've already written right here what the whole thing SL is, and it's that x plus 7. So to find SL, we just take x plus 7, substitute in for x, and SL comes out to a total of 12. And that is the end of that. So we just look at the picture and match it up with one of those theorems and see which formula we use.